and turn it over to my special guest here. Uh, I brought a speaker on, Pastor Mark Driscoll. Uh, Pastor Mark's been a friend and a mentor to me for many years. Uh, I had an opportunity to take him to his first UFC in Las Vegas. And I think we hit another one up in Seattle. And uh, I've attended his church services in uh, Seattle Seahawks stadiums. We filled that up one year for Easter and uh, known Mark for a long time. And I just wanted to uh, thank him for giving us this opportunity to uh, listen to a message he wants to share with us. And uh, grateful to have you, Pastor. Good to have you, buddy. How long do you want me to go for you? With a preacher, you got to always ask, how much time do I have, you know? Well... We, we, we've got an hour on this call and uh, we only took 10 minutes of it because there's no new news. So uh, we're, we're hoping that you got some good news for us. Okay. Look, if it's okay too, my, my wife Grace is here with me. I'll introduce you to my wife. At least We'd love to. Context. Yeah. So, yeah. This is my wife. Hi. Grace. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing? <laughs> we're hanging in there. Yeah. Not fun right now, but. <laughs> no, it's hard to be in a uh, contact sport. Uh, combat sport I'm guessing with social distancing I can't even imagine I don't know what you do air wrestling or I don't know how you do that so we, we're sorry for what you're going through but I, I appreciate the opportunity and I'll catch you in a little bit yeah. babe uh, we're here at the church today and uh, I'll share a little bit about me and then maybe something that would be helpful um, so I grew up um, blue collar hard working my dad was a union drywaller construction worker I grew up behind a strip club next to an airport uh, where the Green River Killer and Ted Bundy were. So rough neighborhood. So uh, I grew up fighting a lot. I obviously wasn't any good at it. Otherwise, I'd, I'd have an Olympic medal like Matt does. And then uh, I just thought that I would be a hardworking, self-disciplined, sort of grinded out kind of guy. I came from that blue collar background. And that did work for me for a while. Um, I was most likely to succeed. Student body president, four-year letterman, man of the year good athlete, played football, played baseball. I boxed a little bit just for fun. And then I met Grace when we were 17 uh, years of age. We've been together now for uh, 30 some years. And, um, and I, I did it all wrong. So for the guys that are listening, I'm not here to judge anyone, just share an insight from an old guy, maybe a father's heart. And, uh, and I started sleeping with Grace at 17. So here I am at 17, not a Christian, but I'm a good, hardworking, moral kind of jock blue collar kid sleeping with a pastor's daughter. And the center of my whole life was me. I thought that everyone should serve me and that I should achieve my potential and that I should be able to do everything that I want to do. And that the people around me, their job really was to support me, to help me so that I could do the things that I was capable of doing. And, uh, and all of that changed in college. Uh, I was 19 years of age. And I realized that if I make myself the center of my life, the center of my existence, the center of my identity, that number one, I wouldn't really be loving the people around me. I'd just be using them because it wouldn't be about their well-being or how they were doing. Their only function would be to benefit me. And that would make me a very unloving person, a very selfish person. Hard to have a good marriage, hard to be a good husband, hard to be a good father, hard to be a good friend if everyone exists for you and you don't exist for them. And so then I, I got into a, a group in college and started going to Bible studies and learning a little bit. And, uh, and, and I want to share something with the guys that I think is really a gift. And that is right now when you can't train right now, when you can't compete right now, when even as I just heard on the call, the whole world is having a hard time sequencing and planning because we don't know what's next and we don't know when we get to go back to anything that looks like normal. This is a really special opportunity that very few people get. And, and in addition, very few world-class athletes get to actually not just be frustrated and wait to go back to normal, but to ask if they were healthy and what was normal and what adjustments can be made so that when they do return to the sport, they do so with a much healthier mental attitude and disposition. And what I'm talking about is um, that the center of your life is someone or something. And for most people, the center of their life, the gravitational center of the universe that everyone and everything rotates around is them. And I'll, this will be offensive, but for athletes, that's times infinity. 
the most selfish, self-consumed, self-absorbed, narcissistic people tend to be the highest performers in sports and entertainment. These are your rock stars and these are your athletes. These are the guys who do well. Let's say in college wrestling, I'm here next to ASU. I know a lot of guys on that team and they attend my church. Uh, then you go maybe graduate to the UFC. Now you're in rock star status and you cash all your checks. The people that tend to be the most selfish, the most self-consumed, the most self-absorbed, uh, the most self-aware and the most self-demanding are the highest performers in entertainment and in sports. And the way you get to that place is you use people rather than loving them. You push everyone to the side, you put yourself in the center, and then everyone comes along to push you up so that you can achieve your full potential, get your record deal, get your television deal, get your book deal, get your UFC deal, get your Olympic medal, whatever the case may be, whatever the, the goal is for you. And here's what I, I just want to share as a guy who's pushing 50 and has been doing this a while, the worst thing that can happen is that you succeed. The worst thing that can possibly happen to you is that you succeed. If your whole goal is to get back to training so that you can win, so that you can be elevated, so that you can achieve your potential, and that all of your staff exists for your greatness, I'm just telling you that people who reach that point self-destruct. We know this of politicians, we know this of business leaders, we know this of entertainment stars, we know this of athletes. Those who achieve exactly what they want self-destruct. And here's why. You and I need to have someone and something other than ourselves as the center of our life. And the worst thing that can happen if you're the center of your life, particularly as a world-class athlete, your emotional well-being is absolutely tied to your performance. Meaning, if you make weight, you feel great. If you don't make weight, you're devastated. If you win, you feel great. And if you lose, you are devastated. And what that causes for an athlete is an incredible pressure. Uh, a friend of mine some years ago, he was a snapper for the NFL. So his job was literally to put, you know, a dead pig between his legs and snap it back for a field goal and or a punt. And this guy struggled with anxiety, depression, sleeplessness, insomnia, because he had to be perfect every single time. And if he wasn't perfect, the whole world would know and they would all comment about him. Athletes live under a pressure that very few people ever have the opportunity to even experience. You have to be perfect every day. You have to be perfect in your training. You have to be perfect in your conditioning. You have to be perfect in your weight cutting. You need to be perfect in your mental preparation. You need to be perfect in your physical preparation. You need to be perfect in your rehydration going into the, the event. Uh, you can't be sick. And if you are, you've got to find a way to push through it. That kind of pressure is so difficult to live under because again, if you're the center of your life and your identity and your well-being as a human being or let alone as a man is ultimately tied to your performance, your emotional state is going to be very unhealthy and very unwell. In addition, Everyone around you will be used by you to achieve your potential, but you're really not loving people. This is why world-class athletes, they make crummy husbands, they make crummy fathers, and they make crummy friends. Because I'm the center and you need to exist for me. And if at any point you inconvenience me, I then dismiss you because I have no place for you. So what I'm saying is in the middle of all of this, if your identity, if your self-awareness, if your emotional, physical, spiritual well-being is tied to your performance, one of two things are going to happen. You are going to succeed and be proud, arrogant, impossible to deal with, and just domineering, overbearing, and a prima donna. And we all know athletes like that. They're great at what they do, but nobody really likes them. Nobody admires them. And we're all cheering for their downfall uh, because we want them to be brought down a peg because they're proud and arrogant and domineering and overbearing. If you fail at your achievement, results, performance, attitude, you are ruined. You are wrecked. 
you are self-destructing. Because if your whole life was to achieve something and you fall short, emotionally, it means that your whole identity is a failure and your whole life is lived in vain. And this is the, these are the really only two options for those people who are the center of their life. If they succeed, they're arrogant and lonely. And if they fail, they are depressed, suicidal, and self-destructive. Okay? And, and the whole litany of, of entertainment, of politics, of business, of sports, plays this out over and over and over. This is why sometimes the icons of one generation don't make it because they self-destruct. And this can be, we all know, let's say, for example, in the entertainment industry, whether it's the, uh, the Morrisons, the Hendrix, whomever it may be, they kill themselves. Like, why would they kill themselves? Um, we know this from, um, from those that are in the entertainment industry as well. Um, whether it's a guy like Johnny Depp who self-destructs, whether it's uh, guys like uh, Owen, who was a well-known actor who was comedic and had a great sense of humor and tried to kill himself. And all of a sudden people are like, if you are rich, if you are successful, if you are at the top of your game, if you've achieved all of your objectives, if all the coaches in your life have gotten you to the point where you actually did exactly what you want to do and then you self-destruct, why is that? It's because you're not built to be the center of your universe and you're not built to live under that amount of pressure. In addition, if you fail, then you have no purpose to life. You have no reason to be alive. And this is where people who fail, they get suicidal and self-destructive. I've got a lot of friends that are pro athletes. I've, been a ch I've done chapels for NFL football teams, major league baseball teams. I, I know a lot of professional athletes. God forbid they get injured all of a sudden they start drinking and self-destructing. God forbid they get traded. God forbid they lose their contract. God forbid they go out into whatever their field of combat or competition is and they lose. They completely self-destruct. And so what I'm saying is if you are a world-class athlete and you all are, this break from the sport is not the worst thing that's happened to you. It may be the greatest opportunity that God has ever given you to pull back and to say, okay, what would it be like if someone other than me was the center of my life? The nice thing is, if someone other than me is the center of my life, it takes a lot of the pressure off of me to always be perfect. It allows me to win or lose. It allows me to make weight or not make weight. It allows me to be healthy or injured. And what I am saying is, I'm a 50 year old guy who's been doing this for a long time. And I'm telling you guys the same thing I would tell my own son in, and that is that someone needs to be the center of your life, but it can't be you, and it should be God. And that if God is the center of your life, then if you win or lose, your emotional well-being is consistent. Whether you're healthy or injured, your relationship with God and your identity and your security and your purpose and your dignity, they're unaffected. If your identity, if your self-esteem, if your self-image is tied to your performance, then you are in dangerous territory. If your identity, if your self-image, if your self-awareness, if the center of your life is God, then your life is secure. You can compete at the highest levels. And if you succeed, still be humble, be thankful, be gracious. If you fail, you don't need to self-destruct and kill yourself because you still have love, you have security, you have identity, you have relationship. And I guess what I'm telling, particularly the young athletes, because you guys are young and I'm old enough to be your dad, most of you are only thinking about how do I get back to training, get back to competing so that I can accomplish everything that I have sought my whole life, all the sacrifices and payments that my family and I have made. But I'm telling you this, even if all goes back and you all win gold medals, and I'm an American, so I hope you do, there will be a day that you're right back to where you are now. You're not a world-class athlete. You're not in training. You're not in the physical best possible shape you could be. You're not able to compete and your career will come to an end. And so what I'm telling you is in this season where you can't do normal, start to prepare for the future where eventually what has been normal to you, it's going to end. There will be a day you're not on the US Olympic wrestling team. There will be a day that you're not a world-class athlete. There will be a day where you're my age, 50 years old, 
and what used to be a six pack has become a cooler. I'm just telling you that gravity wins and that's the future. And I'm telling you that most young guys, they just fight to get to the top of the mountain and they never ask, what kind of human being will I be when I get there? Am I gonna be healthy? Am I gonna be happy? Am I gonna have a good marriage? Am I gonna raise good kids? Am I gonna have good emotional well-being? Am I gonna have a good soul and spiritual life with God? And most never ask that question. And again, what I'm telling you is, this is not the worst thing. This might be the best opportunity. And in my experience, whether it's business, politics, entertainment, or sports, if your relationship is with God as the center of your life, and I'm a Christian, so I'm gonna tell you his name is Jesus Christ, then the good news is your identity is secure. If I win, succeed, Jesus still loves me. If I fail, Jesus still loves me. Unlike the crowds who show up when I perform, Jesus also knows and loves me when I'm home off the stage, not performing. And what this means is you don't need to be perfect because now you've got someone else who was perfect for you. What this means is you can fail because someone else succeeded for you. What this means is that you don't need to be the center of your life and it takes a lot of the pressure off you. The result is then that actually it increases your performance because people that are under extreme duress and pressure and responsibility, they tend to overthink it. They tend to lose the mental game. Uh, they tend then to self-destruct. Those that have that pressure off, and in sports, we talk about the guys who can play the game loose. They're relaxed. They're not as worried. They're able to just enter in and be present in the moment. I'm telling you that because you didn't make yourself, you don't know how to make yourself healthy because you weren't here first, God was, you're not the center of your existence. And because you, who you are is really in relationship to him, if you replace him with yourself, you are putting too much pressure to perform on yourself and ultimately you're gonna self-destruct. And, and again, just, just think of it, worst case scenario, you can compete, you can get back to training, you win the medal, you achieve all of your objectives, then what? Who are you? What does your future look like? What do your relationships look like? What does your emotional health look like? What does your spiritual health look like? Who do you want to be, not on the other side of the Olympics, but how do you, who do you wanna be in 15, 20, 30, or 40 years? And what I have seen is a lot of athletes who won at their sport, lost at life, and, and Matt and I could give you a list of guys that we personally know that their private life is a total disaster, though their athletic life was a complete success. And the reason was they were the center of their universe and they self-destructed and their life didn't work. So here's what I'm telling you, just like all of the planets orbit around some sort of center and it's the geographic and it's the, um, you know, it's, it's the uh, gravitational force that holds everything together. If it is you, you're a dead man. If it is wrestling, you are a dead man. If it is the US Olympic team, you are a dead man. If it is a gold medal, you are a dead man. And if it's Jesus Christ, you'll be fine whatever happens. And I know this is a lot to say, and most of you are young and not even going to consider it, but I'm just telling you as an older guy who's been doing this for a long time, this might be the greatest opportunity that you have ever been given to pull back from all of those deadlines, pressures, expectations, and competitions, and not to just worry about being a great athlete, but being a great man, and being a great husband, and being a great father, and being a great human being. Because at the end of the day, when you are on your deathbed, you will not care if they come and lay medals on your chest. You're gonna want your wife, you're gonna want your kids, you're gonna want your grandkids and your friends to come and say, we love you and life with you is a blessing. And so I'm saying to you that performance matters, but people matter most. And the person who matters most is Jesus Christ. There is someone who loves, there is someone who forgives, there is someone who helps, there is someone there when you succeed to keep you humble, there is someone there when you fail to keep you from being self-destructive and suicidal. And what you need is an identity that is life-proof. 
And for most people, their identity is tied to their performance in their life. And so their emotional, mental, spiritual well-being is actually sort of riding on those seas, those tumultuous seas of performance. And we all know what this is like. What I'm saying is you need an identity that is life-proof and it allows you to then win or lose, be healthy or injured, compete or not compete, get a medal or go home in the first round. And the only way you get that is if someone is at the center of your life and they are the source of your security and identity and they help you to become the kind of person that is healthy with an identity that is life proof and not contingent on performance. So Matt, I thank you for this opportunity. I'll keep my comments relatively short. <clears throat> but again, I think for those who are listening, if you're just thinking, I just wanna get back to normal, I'm telling you normal probably wasn't good for you. And there probably is something far better for you than just getting back to normal. Yeah, Mark, thank you so much for the message.